Welcome to How to Become an Appium Desktop Ninja. My name is Wim Sellers and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect at Sauce Labs. This video is part of a series of six videos where we look into what you need to know to become that Appium Desktop Ninja. In this video, we will focus on use different versions of Appium with Appium Desktop by connecting them to each other. I first want to explain how you can set up and how you can download Appium on your local machine. First of all, there are some prerequisites. And one of the things that I mentioned in one of the first videos is that Appium relies on Node.js. It has been built on top of Node.js. So what we need to do here is we need to install Node.js on our machine. This can be done on Linux, this can be done on Windows, and this can be done on Mac. If you want to use it, you have three options. The first options will be equal for all the three uh, platforms. You can just go to nodejs.org and download it from there. When you're using Windows, Linux or Mac, you can also use a Node version manager. And what that means is that, first of all, Node.js is also software. You will also get new releases. You will get major releases like Node.js 12, 13, 14, 15. With the Node.js version manager, you can easily switch between different versions of Node.js. And to be honest, this is my preferred way of working with Node.js because I can easily use that switch and to see if something is working, yes or no. And then last but not least, you've got Homebrew. And Homebrew is something for OS X machines. So if you have a Mac, Homebrew, if you don't want to use the version manager, Homebrew might also be a way for you to download Node.js. And the advantage you would have there in comparison to downloading it just through the Node.js website is that with Homebrew, nine out of 10 times, your user rights will be set properly. So you don't have any issues installing modules like we will do with Appium. So if you've downloaded Node.js, if you kind of like set up your machine, we can go to the next step. And the next step will be installing Appium. And you can do that with different ways. You can do it in different ways. The first way to do that is just by using npm install minus g appium. And appium is the name of the package. Minus g means you will install it globally, but you can also provide an add sign and then refer to a latest version, to a beta version, or maybe even uh, refer to a specific release candidate if you want to test that on your machine. So this is a way how you can download Appium on your machine. Then what I would always advise you to do is to also install the Appium Doctor. Also install it globally, and especially if you're doing this for the first time. Because Appium Doctor can help you diagnose and fix common Node, iOS, and Android configuration issues before you're even starting Appium. And you might wonder, okay, how does it look like? Well, we already saw how Appium looked like. It's just server logs. And Appium Desktop is not different, not a lot different. What it will provide you is a list of options that are correct or are not working on your machine. And the most common things, as you can see here, it's verifying the node version. It's verifying if you have Xcode. It's verifying if cartridge is found, if you want to use iOS, if your environment variables are set basically checking if you can run Appium on your machine. So if you've set up Node.js, if you've downloaded Appium, and if you've verified that Appium Doctor, with Appium Doctor, that Appium has been configured on your machine, we can start serving Appium as a server on our local machine. So let's take a look at how to connect Appium to Appium Desktop. So what you see here is the starting screen of Appium Desktop. And there are two ways of connecting a different Appium server to Appium Desktop. Let's just go to the most common case where you already have Appium Desktop running. So this is for example, a simple setup. I would click on start server and I would, lie, I would have a session already open, at least a basic session window. But what if I want to use Appium, a different version of Appium? And like I mentioned in one of the previous videos, when you download Appium Desktop, you will automatically get 
Appium installed and it will be the latest version that is packaged into Appium Desktop. In this case, it will be Appium 1.18.2, as you can see in the logs. But what if we want to use a latest version because something was fixed or I want to verify if a bug that I reported on the Appium uh, GitHub page was fixed in the latest candidate. Well, let's just take a look here and let me zoom in my screen a little bit. I already installed Appium with the minus G option. I did npm install minus G and I installed the latest release candidate. So I can just verify it by saying Appium minus V and it will give me the version. In this case, it's 1.19.0 and then release candidate one. I want to use this specific Appium version when I'm going to explore the elements on, for example, the Android emulator here. The only thing I need to do here is to start Appium. And you can start Appium by just calling the commands. You've already installed it globally. But we need to be aware of that in this case, Appium is already running in Appium Desktop, as you can see. It's already running here on port 4723. If I would now start a new Appium session on that port, it will collide and it will not start. So in this case, I need to start it on a different port. And I can do that by providing minus P and saying, I want to start it on 4724. So let us now just start a new 1.19.0 release candidate. And as you can see here, it's running. It has a listener started on localhost. And I now want to connect to that Appium session. And in our previous session, we mentioned that we wanted to get back to the custom server. This is the tab that I was mentioning. And let me just make this a little bit bigger. In this tab, you can provide your remote host, which could be just the local host as you're using here, but it could also be a host which is hosted somewhere in your uh, network, in your company network, or it could even be a specific remote host on Sauce Labs if you want to connect to that. And we will get back to connecting to Sauce Labs in uh, the next video, but you can always configure Appium Desktop here to use a different Appium server than it would use by default. What we can also do here is fill in the remote port and we can also fill in the path. In this case, I already started using port 4724, as you can see here, but you can change it to whatever port you are running it on. Now let me get back to the saved capabilities. Let me go to this pixel device, which I configured. Let me just see if everything is set up properly. And if I would now start a session, I expect to see logs in this terminal. And I expect not seeing any logs in this terminal because I'm going to use a remote server. And to make it easier, with Appium Desktop, you can even clean your logs. And if you're using a uh, Mac machine, you can do Command K and the logs are clear here. They're clean. If I would now start the session, you could see that the server is not running here. The server is being used from the terminal here, the Appium server, which I started separately. So what is now going to happen is going to build the Appium application, push the Appium application to Android, and it will then push uh, our testable app the application that we want to test to the device. And like I mentioned before, we have a white screen here, just refresh it, and we will have the screenshot with this application. This is the first way, because in this case, we already had something running. But what if you just start Appium Desktop? What if you just, if you don't want to start the Appium server and then start a new one? What if you just want to start the new one? Well, let's just stop this session, close this new configuration, stop the server, close it, and we will have a screen like this. Let me also clear the logs here. If you're using a Mac or if you're using a Windows machine, you would always have a menu. In this case, if we go to the Appium menu, you would see that you have the option with command N to start a new session. 
without using the server. So not pressing on the start server button and then going to the magnifying glass, but we can just click on this option, new session window, and it will start a new session window. Let me just do that by doing command N. It will start that new session window. And now I can even start using Appium Desktop, not with the automatic server, because as you can see, it has been grayed out. You cannot use it. So now you need to use a remote server. And again, I can select my emulator here, go to this config, say start session, and it will automatically start the session based on the port that I provided. The remote host, if not being entered, it will be default to localhost, and the path will also be used from the default path from Appium. So hopefully you now have seen and hopefully you now know how to adjust this in Appium Desktop and how to work with newer versions of Appium or maybe older versions of Appium. So let me get back to the presentation. Together with the previous videos, we covered theory and background about Appium, configured an Android emulator and iOS simulator on a local machine. I've shown you how to use Appium Desktop with local connected emulators and simulators, and how you can connect a different version of Appium with Appium Desktop. In our next video, we're going to cover connecting SAS Labs as a cloud provider to Appium Desktop. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you in the next one.